<laughs> so, um, so we're going to learn about butterflies. Butterflies are insects. So if you were in the previous one, we also talk about another insect, the bee. So butterflies are incredible. You cannot imagine how awesome butterflies are. I'm going to use, as always, uh, an eraser that mine is a little bit dirty, so I'll have to remember to clean it a little bit before I use it, a sharpener, a 2B pencil, and the reason is because um, I like it when, when I can erase a line and it doesn't scratch the paper. So that's why I like the more B a pencil has in it, the softer it is. I don't like 8B unless I'm gonna smudge everything. Uh, and then I have a light blue pencil. If you have a non-photo blue pencil, that's fine. But if you have a light blue, that's absolutely wonderful. Okay, okay, so let's get started here. I am so, so happy to start sketching um, butterflies with you. So the photo that we have here today, I'm gonna to write down, uh, is the Red Admirable. And this photo was taken by photographer Jeffrey uh, Shuen. And it's very nice to acknowledge the photographers that, that uh, take these beautiful photos. Uh, the, the butterfly, however, we're going to do something different with the colors. Uh, but just I wanted to show you how beautiful they are in profile. You can see the big antennas. We can see the legs on each side, the big eyes, and what butterflies are known for, the wings. And they go through different stages. So we, I have some, some, some surprises, <laughs> some surprises for you today. So we're going to start our butterfly. Our butterfly is going to have a head, uh, a thorax, and an abdomen, like all insects. And ours is going to be looking that way. Remember our bee was looking that way? So let's start, uh, because the wings are big, I'm going to start here. So do that in your page. Make sure that you have room for the wings as wing as big as you want to draw them. So I'm going to put my head here. And I'm going to make sure that you can see it. Wonderful. So I'm just going to make a circle. And I'm using these, as always, as our x-ray vision. So it's not going to be seen at the end, I promise. Then I'm going to do another oval. And that's going to be for my thorax. Not mine, the butterfly. <laughs> so this is another one. And look how they overlap the head and the thorax. I'm going to start writing this. That's the head here, and that's the thorax. Then they have the abdomen. And I'm going to do another oval. And this time, this oval is going to be longer and thinner. So if you want me to go a little bit slower, I'll stop here. And let's catch up together. I'm going to write abdomen. I often misspell it, so I have to make sure. Head is just a circle. Then the thorax is another circle that, because it's a little bit stretched, it starts to be an oval. And then finally, the abdomen, a super duper stretch circle, a super duper stretch oval. So when we have these, we are going to make sure that we draw the eye. And the butterfly's eyes are also compound eyes too. They have big eyes. So I'm just gonna draw a big circle here and another circle. We're not gonna see the back of the circle. So I'm gonna start with the graphite now so you can see what I'm doing. This is our head and that's one part of the eye or the far back eye, and the one that we're going to see in this profile view is that eye. And you see, that's because when, imagine that my hand is, my fist is the head. If you have two eyes, book, book here, if I turn my hand, you no longer see the whole uh, sharpener, do you? But if I turn my head, you do. So things that are behind other things, we can only see a tiny tap of it. I'm going to leave uh, the lower part for some surprise, surprise structures that we're going to see in a second. But I'm going to continue with my blue because I want to draw the wings. Where are the wings going to be? 
because we are in profile view, like in this photo, we're going to see a big wing and a smaller wing. So we're going to draw this shape on this page. And you can draw the wings as big, big, big as you want. But I recommend that we start uh, they're going to anchor at different places. So one is going to anchor here and the other one a little bit behind. So I'm just making two circles so I know in my head. And then one thing that helps is to know when the tip of your wing is going to be. I think mine is going to be around here. So I'm going to now, and you can go very slow, line, 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 line. Don't, don't speed up. Just take your time to make one line that curves back to where you said your wing was going to end. So I started here and you take all the time that you need. This is not a speed contest. We can take as much time as we want. We have one hour. <laughs> then from here, have you noticed how there's like a big curvy S? Well, I want to draw that and I want to end here. So I can take all the time I need to make my S. And what you see here, the abdomen here is a little bit hidden. We cannot see it, but it's here. So the wing goes a little bit beyond the abdomen. So don't worry if you have to go over your lines until you finally find your shape. It looks like a tiny drop of water. Isn't that fun? <laughs> That's incredible. And because there are two wings, I'm going to make sure that around here, I add a curvy line that goes into the thorax. So let's go through that again, OK? We did the head, we did the thorax, and then we did the abdomen. We added a little bit of graphite already on the head to show you the eyes. One that we can see full, 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 and the other one that we can see only a tiny, tiny bit. And then we drew where the two wings on each side anchor. One a little bit closer and one a little bit in the middle of the thorax. The wings do not come from the abdomen or from the head. Can you imagine? That would be so, so, so interesting if wings came from the head. Then we decided how tall our wings were going to be. And mine were a little bit here. With a little bit of luck, you, you remember that we placed the head a little bit lower in the papers. You, you had enough room. Then we took our time to draw a curvy line that bends back to our tip. And then we draw a line that is super curvy, super curvy, that goes a little bit beyond the abdomen. And you know what? We can actually curve it like this. And because this is an X-ray vision, magic Superman pencil, we can see transparent things. Then we added a little line here that divides this wing that is called the four wing and this wing that is called the hind wing. And there's two on, um, there's two, one on each side. So we will have one on each side. So two times the four wing and the hind wing. Can you reset the eyes? Absolutely. Let's do that again. Thank you so much for asking. <laughs> so let's do it here. For example, let's see. Um, I'm going to draw the circle I had for the head. And what I did, I added a big oval, not quite in the middle, a little bit offset. I'm going to do it a little bit. Hopefully you can see it well. Uh, I'm going to go with graphite so you can see it well. So this was our head. And I added an oval. And that's going to be the eye that is in full view. 
But because the other eye cannot be totally, totally seen, I just made a semicircle. And that's the eye that normally it would be on the other side. But I think she's looking almost at us. Almost, 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 almost. So these, for if, if you want to know a little bit more, um, this is not like full profile, but it's a little bit, uh, it's not frontal. If this, if we had this butterfly looking at us, we would probably see something like this. If we had her from the front view, we would see both eyes, but because we're looking her a little bit in profile, if it was full profile, we would probably only see one eye. So that would be a profile. So there is something in between profile and front view. And a technical is a three quarter front view. I know it's so weird, but that's what it's called. <laughs> Oh, wonderful. I'm glad that that helped. So profile, three quarter front and front view. Great. So now if you want to paint later, the butterfly looking straight at you, looking straight at you like, ha ha, you can draw it like this. Maybe she's turning the head and is looking at you. Okay. So now that we have our wings, the hind wing, the fore wing, let's add some legs, shall we? I think we're starting to look at a butterfly. <laughs> so all the legs are always coming from the thorax. That's a, that's a very big thing about insects. And let's write this thing out here. Insects have six legs and they all come from the thorax. Because we're in profile, we're only going to draw three. But just so you know that there are three on the other side. And as with the bees, I'm going to write circles of where the legs are anchoring. One is definitely closer to the head and the other ones are a little bit further back. One, two, and three. The frontal view is very cute. I know, isn't that cute? I, I almost want to change the view <laughs> and just make her look at us. You can do that. You can put this head right in there. <laughs> She's so cute. Do you want to put like some glasses? It's just so cute. You're absolutely right. So let's see those legs. When we did the bee, we saw that we, we built it with triangles. So let's, um, let's see, I got a little bit of a sound. I hope you're still listening. Wonderful. So let's do triangles for the legs. So we're going to start with a, tri a triangle that comes from here down. That's our first triangle. Then we're going to do a long long, long triangle. Not as thick as the one I drew. I think I did it too thick. As we go back, they do have uh, thicker, thicker triangle legs, but in the front, they're not as thick. So first triangle, second triangle. As you know, this, I'm already curving a little bit the edges. So you know what's coming. We're going to curve all those triangles. Then we have another one here. So we have one triangle, another triangle, and another triangle. And then we have another triangle, it's tiny shorter than this one. And my favorite, favorite, favorite part, the feet of insects. They have three triangles, one, two, and three, and then a bigger triangle with two claws. And I'm gonna go graphite these right away so we can go through it together. The first triangle, the second triangle that overlaps a little bit. And notice how with the graphite, I'm curving some lines because in nature things are much more round um, they're like straight lines. That's more like plants, maybe. They're a little bit more geometrical. Then we have this other triangle that curves a little bit on the edges. And then another triangle. Have you seen how each triangle inserts in the previous ones? 
each is a part of their legs like ours. You wouldn't believe, but they have the same names as we have in our legs. The upper leg, the lower leg, it's really funny. This is the foot. And the foot has three tiny triangles and one slightly larger and curvier. And these tiny, tiny claws at the end. And those are called tarsal claws. And that's what allows them to step on a plant, climb leaves. Those are the tiny, 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 tiny bits of foot that allows them to actually climb all the leaves. Like in here. It's just that we don't see it because they're hidden here. So that is the end of the leg of a butterfly and really insects, really. This is very similar to the bee. So let's do the other two legs, shall we? And I think they're gonna change a little bit in perspective, but they're gonna have the same parts. For example, our triangle, the first triangle is gonna be much more, um, instead of being like this, it's gonna be a little more like this. Our second triangle is totally overlapping, but it's still a second triangle. Our third triangle is gonna go down and it's gonna get a little bit thicker, but not too much thick, just a little bit. Then the same thing that we did here, this part here, and then, yeah, I know my favorite part, Maybe you have a favorite. Oh, I'm gonna move all these parts down so I can fit the leg better. So I'll put the head, thorax, and abdomen labels, abdomen labels a little bit lower so I can fit the foot and the claws. So I'm gonna do the same with graphite. Some things are in front of the others. The thing that is going to be in front on this leg is this one here. That's going to be in front. Do you see that? So now I won't see that edge of that triangle. I see this one. And you know what? If you play with Lego, you might have seen like this come very easy to you when pieces are on top of each other. So what I'm doing is some making joints. Each point where this uh, meat is called a joint. So they all meet like your knees, like your elbows. These are exactly the same. And they bend. So here they use these to bend. Then my favorite, the foot with the tarsal cloth. That's my second leg. I'm just going to draw the third leg and the third leg is looking back. So I'm going to start with the triangle. I'm going to do another triangle and look, it's almost a mirror image. Almost. A little bit thicker triangle. The other triangle and this foot is looking but this way, they're all not looking to the front. This leg is going to be looking at the back. So just remember that not uh, when you when you look an insect at an insect from from up close. Notice how where are all the legs sitting, and and notice if they are facing forward or facing backwards. So I'm going to do the exact same thing here. I think I'm going to have this triangle in front, this a little bit on the back, and definitely this is the one that is going to be at the very back. And if the back one came a little bit thicker, good, because as they come back to the end, to the, the very back, they become a little bit thicker. And then, oh, I miss a part here. So that's the other one. And one, two, 
and three. So that is actually the, the one we see. <laughs> it looks like a gar. <laughs> I just made him a little bit too, like a, <laughs> like he was gonna suddenly attack a whole city and take no prisoners. There we go. So there we go. More time for legs. Absolutely. So let's do a leg here. Okay. So while we catch up with these ones, we have a triangle. Imagine that this is the abdomen. Uh, sorry, the thorax. We drew a circle to see where do they anchor. We drew a first triangle, then another triangle, another longer triangle, slightly larger triangle. That's so many triangles, right? And then three. So let's divide this a little. We have one triangle here. That's our number one. Another triangle here. Another triangle here. And I think where the, where the complex part is that sometimes they are joining vertex with this um, edge and sometimes they're joining vertex to vertex. So yeah, I know it's a little bit. I try to draw triangles because it makes things a little bit more simple. So I hope I'm not missing two. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then the foot that has one, two, three, and four. So really, when you have an insect, all you need to do is to place him on the ground. And uh, the thing is that um, you can also use uh, stick, stick figures. For example, I could make this insect that I'm making up. I could make him stand on this surface. One, two, three, four, and then the foot. I can make him stand with this foot. One, two, three, four, and the foot. And then just remember that the back is the mirror of that one. One, two, three, four, and then the foot. So in a way, like you are really, uh, imagine that you had um, a, a series of joints. Imagine that my pencil are all these triangles or joints and you're just positioning them. So you actually get to connect the thorax, the bug, the insect to the floor. So I hope, I hope that helps a little bit. So I'm also gonna use maybe a color for each. So it's easier. So one, this is not the real color, but just so it's easier. Two, three, four, and we leave the foot uh, like this. So let's do the same thing here. Uh, I'll use the same colors. One, one, and one, two, two, and two. And then I use the green for the three, three, three. And then I use the blue here for the fourth. And we left we we left the the foot uh, like this. So I hope I, I hope that that helps a little bit. Uh, I'll put it like this so you can see the foot. I hope I hope that that helps a little bit um, with with the legs. So while we catch up with that, I'll start adding uh, the antenna. And the antenna come from here and you can have a lot of fun with the antenna because for example mine if i make a line whoop like this and whoop like that you can make your antenna with like a s like a big s that comes from the head right in the middle of the eyes we're gonna see a little square a little square and what is the difference between butterflies and moths? Well, butterflies have, in the end, they have clubs. So a little bit thicker at the end. 
that is how to distinguish one of the one of the ways of distinguishing a butterfly from a moth. Although, as always, there are exceptions. And a moth maybe wants to pass as a butterfly. That, that antenna didn't come out very well, but um, I'm happy with that. So this is a club antenna. And they have two of them. Then there's a very, very interesting uh, structure and it's called the nose palpi. And there are two of them. Uh, I'm gonna just make one uh, on one end and the other one I'm just gonna suggest it. So we're not, um, we're not confused, but uh, this structure, I'm just gonna make it here. It's like a tiny spike, like a horn really, that's the other one. So these, these nose palpi, they're very, very interesting. They are allowing the butterfly to, 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 check, to check the territory. Where, where am I? Where the antenna is more like a radar. Like, oh, where? Um, where is food? Is this food good? I'll touch it and see if it's good. Once they find the food, they project the proboscis. And the proboscis is just this elongated structure that comes from the mouth. And it comes as a straw that bends in a curl. So this is when it's curled. And this is when it's not curled. And it gets right inside the flower. And it, like a straw. Imagine that you had a straw and you put it inside orange juice. But that's what the proboscis does. All the nectar goes in, in, in. Are we doing good? Awesome. I want to add something to the, to the wings because we left it there. And I think it's very, very important that we add a little bit of uh, design into the wings. Uh, you can have so much fun with this. I found that the monarch butterfly has the most beautiful structures. So I'm just going to go and uh, maybe with the blue, non photo blue pencil, I'm going to add some uh, big, big squares. You can add dots, you can add ovals. I'm going to start adding some structures into the wing. As you see, I made one big, I don't know how to describe it, a puddle. <laughs> and then from this puddle, I'm going to make another puddle, but it's not going to continue all the way to the edge of the wing. Mm -mm, I'm going to make tiny paddles here. So I'm going to start using the graphite so you can see it better. So I'm going to define my wing a little bit better so you can see it in the point where it anchors the other wing. There we go. And you can also curve a little bit some of these uh, edges. They're not exactly, exactly, even maybe a butterfly, uh, maybe she got a bite. Uh, so maybe she got an adventure and maybe you find a butterfly that has a little bit uh, missing. Maybe something got caught in, in the tree. So just make sure that you look very, very closely and you find that maybe this butterfly had a very interesting adventure. So I'm going to add this big puddle inside the forewing because when I add color, I want to define the areas that I want to put my favorite colors. Your purple, you can use uh, purple, blue, yellow. Your wings can have the colors that you would like. So you can add similar areas to the ones I'm making or you can create your own. One trick, whatever shape, make sure that they are becoming smaller as we go to the very end of the, to the tip of the forewing. For example, monarch butterflies have very interesting white 
spot right at the very end. This is not a uh, monarch. This is a red admirable. But you can tell that too, these sections and these little, little, little dots at the end. So I'm just, uh, yeah, choose, choose your favorite butterfly. When, you, when we end today, oh, you can search and find what's your, your favorite butterfly. I like monarch butterflies because they migrate and I like that when it's getting when it's getting too cold they take all their things they pack and they go to Mexico <laughs> so they go from the north uh, from the continent the north um, like if this is the world the world map and we only and this is um, the, the uh, continent that we're living. So let's see if I can make this by memory. This is South America, North America. Uh, this is Spain, Europe. Doo -doo 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 -doo. I'm just making this map a little bit as I remember Middle East. Doo -doo -doo -doo. So we live here. This is Canada, Greenland, all the Northern territories. So butterflies, they come, uh, they, they migrate from the North America, for all these part of the continent, they go to Mexico, to the tropical areas of the American continent and to South America. So all these arrows are indicating how they migrate. That's the planet. So imagine how much, how much distance they fly when it's cold, they go to warmer areas. So I, I, I think they're very strong and I think they're very brave too. Imagine all the currents, all the predators. I'm gonna make more, also more stuff here. And you can, again, feel free to copy what I'm doing. I'm trying to go a little bit slower, but also go forward so we, we can add color, which I think is the fun, fun, fun thing of butterflies. So I am gonna add a little bit of um, this sort of kind of segments. I don't know how to call them segments. And also monarch butterflies, um, it's not unusual that they sit on people. <laughs> so they are very big too. Um, I, I think if we look at a, at a butterfly, a but monarch butterfly from the top, the wingspan is 10 centimeters. I think I have a ruler here to show you how big 10 centimeters is. So 10 centimeters is almost, let's see, it's like this pencil. So that's the butterfly. That's big. <laughs> I am incredibly impressed. Yeah. But guess what? Butterflies not always look like this. Because butterflies, they lay eggs, right? They lay eggs. And from the egg, it comes, let's see, from the egg, we have a hungry, hungry caterpillar, right? Hungry, hungry caterpillar. And the caterpillar eats, eats, eats for two weeks, everything that it can find. And then it becomes, a pupa, which is very interesting. It's like a chrysalis. It's like um, like a tiny, tiny house. And she stays there for 15 days and then butterfly. Isn't that amazing? And I wanted to share something with you. Let's see if I can. So I went to the garden and I found a caterpillar and I put it on my bug box and she's been eating broccoli leaves and 
see if I can find it for you. Where is Cleo? Hey, Cleo. Let's see, where is she? I'll take it away from the, from the thing so you can see it. I'm going to find my caterpillar and show you while you catch up with the drone. Let's see. Do, do, do. Ah, hello, Cleo. So I don't know if you can see, but that's that's a caterpillar. Hi, you're eating so much. So these leaves were new this morning. This is all the poop right here that she's been making. And I have her in my bug box that has holes so she can stay happy. And I want to see how she becomes a pupa. And I want to see how she becomes a butterfly. So say hi, say hi. Yes, okay, I'm gonna put you back. So that's that's interesting because this uh, Cleo is actually a cabbage butterfly. Oh my goodness, the poop <laughs> fell into the page. Um, so Cleo is a is a, a cabbage butterfly. So she's gonna be uh, white with tiny dark spots. And I can wait to see her turn into a butterfly because I want to sketch her. And I'm going to make more videos uh, sketching her. So thank you for letting me introduce my friend Cleo. Cleo, I call her Cleo, like Cleopatra. Okay, so you see all the tiny, tiny detail that I added in the butterfly. And one thing for sure that I see here that I'm not doing is the abdomen and the thorax. And I'm gonna add a little bit of hair and segments. And for that, we make tiny curves like this. I can make my abdomen. Then, because we don't see the back of the thorax, the, lead, the wings are on top. All I see is that little bit there, and then the thorax, and then the hair. And monarch butterflies have so many white dots. So many white dots, it's crazy. It's like a, a Dalmatian dog, but in reverse. Instead of being white with dark spots, is very, very dark with uh, white spots. So that's gonna be my, my monarch butterfly. It also, it's super hairy too. So I'm gonna add M, 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 some hairs coming from here, M, M, M. You know, if you have um, drawn with me before that I like to use M's, 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 M's uh, to make hair, to make feathers. So yeah, uh, it's hairy. Very hairy. So I'm going to add a little bit of hair here. M -m -m. M -m 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 -m. And I think I am ready to start adding color. Let's see if I'm forgetting something that I would like to share. Oh, yeah, yeah. My title. I, I would love. Oh, you have a question? Oh, please, Sophie, if you type your question on the chat, I'll read it out loud. And, and I if I don't know it, we'll, we'll find out. <laughs> so yeah, feel free to, 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 to type in your question if you can, while I draw here the title of my drawing, which is gonna be um, butter, like butter, so like thing we eat, butter with two T's, butter, Yeah, and when, when, if you have your question, just type it in and I'll read it out loud. And if I don't know, which might, might be, <laughs> we can maybe find that someone that is with us uh, knows the answer, which would be super cool. Butter, I wonder why it's called butterfly, because I don't know, it doesn't look like butter to me. Ah, that's interesting. I have to read later. Why is it called butterfly? Butter, and that's F, L, and then Y. And I'm going to make my Y a little bit curvy. 
Yeah, that's my title. I like it very much. Very, very much. How many types of butterflies are there? Oh my gosh. Oh my God, so many different types. Like these, this is incredible. Like they, and they are from tiny, 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 tiny bit to massively big. I don't know exactly how many, but I think that maybe hundreds of thousands of different of types. And imagine also the colors. Can you imagine if, if we color this butterfly different, how it's immediately different from one another? And you know what? In like um, in the tropics, they're very big. Uh, here, the one I've seen, and I think, I hope Cleo doesn't become too big, but I think um, the cabbage butterfly is around three centimeters, which must be, yeah, around like this. I don't like to, uh, I don't necessarily would like Cleo to eat all my, my broccoli in the garden, but I brought it in because I would like to, to know how she transforms. So that's why I brought her in. But I, I'm not gonna release her in the garden because I don't want her to eat my broccoli. <laughs> I really have to go to the washroom. That's fine, we'll wait for you. Yeah, we'll wait for you. We'll be here when you come back. I'm just going to start using some colors. Uh, but first, I'm going to maybe add a little bit, like if, imagine that she was sitting on a leaf. So I'm just going to add some curvy, curvy lines here. So she's not just standing in the, in the abyss. So I'm going to, my monarch butterfly is going to have um, all these areas that I, that I define this, puddles. <laughs> I'm going to start coloring them. I'm going to sharpen my pencil a little bit. And I'm using my pencil instead of like this, like this, because in this case, I really have very small areas that I want to define. So I don't want, yeah, I don't want to miss any space. And you can color your butterfly. Oh my, if you have your favorite color, that color that you are like, mm, please, 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 please use your favorite color. I like monarch butterflies as well because they're good pollinators. Um, all insects sit on the flowers, they drink the nectar, and maybe they get a little bit of pollen in their, in their legs. So when they sit on the next flower, they pollinate it. So yeah, they do such a good job. And they're, again, very, very friendly to humans. Um, let's see, I'm going to add a little bit of red here. And there's a word I learned the other day, of the other day that I was like, oh, I need to tell them about that. When we have more than one butterflies, that is called a flutter with two T's, a flutter of butterflies. Isn't that interesting? I didn't know because I have heard like you have a group of flamingos, that's called a flamboyance. A group of ravens, that's a parliament. Crows is a crime. You have a crime of crows if you see more than one. But I didn't know that butterflies were called a flutter of butterflies. I thought that was very pretty. I guess because they flutter. There we go. And to do, do, I think I'm going to add more red here. And you can, your butterfly can be the colors that you would like it to be. I'm just going to use the same color for my title because it's 1148. So we have roughly 10 minutes to finish it. So. And if you would like to send your, your image to Angela and the nature park, oh, please do, because she sends them to me after. 
And oh my goodness, makes me so happy to see that you really had a great time. It really does. I'm not drawing on a piece of paper. Oh, that's okay. Uh, whatever media you're using, that's absolutely fine. I'm gonna use, um, let's see, a dark brown for the in-between here. I think it's, it's originally is black, the Monarch. I don't know if I have any black around here. I'll have to check my color pencil case. I wanna move forward a little bit. Oh, I didn't mean to send your drawing uh, to them. Not at all, that's your drawing. Just uh, make, a, make a photo of it. Oh, sorry for the confusion. No, 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 don't send your drawing. Send uh, a photo. <laughs> because they, they really like uh, to see how, how people, if people have fun, they would like to see it. Oh my goodness, I made too many of these. So now I have to be careful not to paint over it. There we go. And I think I'm gonna turn my paper a little bit. So I still can color with my fairy. My little brother left my room, it's okay. Maybe if he's too little, he got, he, he had all the fun that he wanted and now he's moving to the next thing. That's okay. I'm sure, I'm sure he had fun. Ah, let's see. So, and once things go back to normal, I'm sure we can meet at the nature, at the nature house and at the Richmond Nature Park. So one of these days, we're gonna be able to draw together all in the same table, and that's so much fun. Okay, so this is just a, a, a tiny pass. Because this uh, wing is behind this, I'm gonna add a little bit of color uh, brown on top. Just to add a little bit of a shadow. There we go. So we know that one is on top of the other. And that's something that you can do with color pencils and with crayons, you can mix. And if you like watercolors, you can mix as well. Yeah. And I'm just pressing a little bit harder now. There we go. So that's, those are gonna be my wings, I think. I think I'm very happy. And also I'm gonna add a little bit of red on top of these. Yeah. That's, that's better. So remember that you can always paint on top of other colors and you get very cool effects, very cool. Now I'm using these again. Ooh, I like this. Are you coloring the head? Let's do the head. You're absolutely right. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of brown, but very, very light, very, very, very light because I wanna color the eye but leave a little bit of light at the top. So let's make sure that however we do the eye, we leave the top not quite with color. And why? Because look at that, now it has volume. So that's a trick. If you leave the top empty of color, suddenly, ooh, now you have very, very round eye. And I'm going to do the same here with the other one. I'm going to leave the top without any color. And I'm going to add a little bit of dark at the bottom. There we go. I think I'm going to color the palpy and then the body. And because my monarch, uh, my monarch butterfly has all these white dots, I just need to color in between. And I know the book says it's black. So I might go with a little bit of blue on top of that. Right? Let's, let's check my, my pencil case really quickly. Oh, ah, I found a black. Awesome. So I'm just gonna go on top. Beep, 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 beep. So it's now 11.53. So I'm gonna, I, I can stay here until, until noon. And we can, we can stay a little bit longer if you want, but I don't want you to, to stay in the computer when you can go outside and, and now you can go to the garden and see what you can find. You can go outside for a walk to the park and you can find so many interesting things that you can draw. 
There we go. So I'm going to now do the legs. And I think the legs, I'm going to make them a little bit light brown, very, very light. I'm going to leave the top without any color so I can see the highlights. What is the eye color? Relish? Well, I'm using a brown, to be honest. I'm just using a brown. What I did is I went very, very, very light, but I left the top without any color. And then I went a little bit again on the bottom and then a little bit again. And each time it builds up more color. So at the end, you see that we create this like effect. It's very cool. And I'm just using a brown, a brown, uh, totally uh, brown, brown, brown. Uh, for the legs, I'm gonna add a little bit of dark where at the joints. So at least, um, this is the area where the joints are together, like there, for example, that would be a little bit darker. Here, again, light at the beginning, and a little bit of light at the top. And when the joints meet, a little bit darker. There we go. And then, light, 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 I'm going to leave the top and where the joints meet. Oh, thank you so much. No, thank you. I'm so glad that you are asking questions. And I don't know. Oh, my. I don't know. I don't know. Probably, you know, so much more than I do. I mean, just um, since I got Cleo, I've just been reading about butterflies. Oh, oh, one thing that is super cool since we're adding color and, and is that is super, super, super duper cool is that the caterpillar of the monarch butterfly. Oh, my gosh. It's so cool. It has yellow stripes and it also has uh, black stripes and white stripes and it's, that is going to become that so it's, it's incredible because I have here behind the photo how these the red admirable um, is also very interesting looking when she is a caterpillar look how hairy she is Look at that. I guess she has all these, you know, I wonder if she has all these spiky bits because um, I bet this is very yummy for a bird. So the more spikes you have, um, maybe maybe a bird would think it twice before eating it. And that is the pupa. So they, they become this kind of structure. And that's what I hope I will see Cleo becoming a, a pupa. So I can see how suddenly she becomes a, a, a butterfly. So yeah. So I'm, I'm very excited about, about following, following tiny Cleo. <laughs> but yeah, isn't that funny that those colors, that, that black, that yellow, that white stripy caterpillar, I don't know how that's going to become an orange and golden and brownish, uh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful butterfly. It's just a mystery to me. Uh, let's add also, I think I would like also to add a little bit um, of black on the head. There we go. And then I cannot forget the abdomen. So I'm just gonna... A little bit of black, to be honest. If I had found my black earlier, maybe I would have used black for the wings as well, but I can always use it on top. There we go. And I know sometimes coloring can be, we have four minutes left. Thank you, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much for the time reminder. I have to share uh, two links with you uh, before you leave today, because I have been putting all these classes that we do together and more on a website that I made. So thanks to the uh, Society Richmond Cares, Richmond Gives, Re Richmond Cares, I have made Curiosity, Creativity and Beyond. So I can put all these drawing classes there. Um, I have put the little brown bat, the chickadee. We also did the Canada goose, the grizzly bear. So you can go there when it's raining outside and you don't have anything better to do. You can uh, watch and, and draw together. And I also have other projects that I did over the winter. 
oh, that's fine. That's why we put it there, Sophie. Don't worry about it. That's why I put them there. So you can go there and watch them when, when it's good for you. Oh my goodness, that's not a problem at all. You see, over the winter, I also grew uh, a young potato and her name is Mildred. And I saw her growing from a tiny potato into a beautiful plant. And you can do that too at home. So I put all these projects so you can follow them and make your own project. There we go. So that I am happy with my butterfly. And one thing I want to do is add a little bit of green here. So she's is standing, maybe not this green, maybe this one. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Doo -doo -doo -doo. She's standing on some, on some leaves and she's gonna pollinate some flower that she just saw. And oh, one thing super, super cool about the monarch butterfly before we leave is that they are, um, they are growing in the International Space Station. They brought some monarch butterflies there. So isn't that amazing that they are astronauts? They're living in the space. They brought a few in the International Space Station. And there's a flower that they like the most is the echinacea. And the echinacea, I'm gonna draw it here very quickly, just in case you see it when you're working in the park. Yeah, it's like very, very, it's like spike, spike, spiky bits. And they're very, very hard to the touch. So it has petals. So if you see these flower, they love it, these monarch butterflies. I'm gonna write the name here so you can know uh, what is it's called the echinacea or oh, echinacea. I pronounce things a little bit special. <laughs> but yeah, this is very important that we take care of butterflies because guess what? Guess what? Herbicides, um, climate change, they can really affect them. So we have to really, really, really take care of our butterflies. Well, thank you so much, everyone. And I wanted to uh, thank the Richmond Nature House again for organizing this. Uh, make sure that you check uh, the Richmond Nature Park website for more classes like this. Oh, what's the site with the classes? Okay, so this is called Curiosity, Creativity and Beyond. And hopefully if I have time, I'll do my best to put these two classes there. Uh, that we did today. I'll do my very, very best to have them before the end of the weekend. But continue checking the, the nature house, okay? So, because that's, that's, that's really how we make these classes possible, thanks to the Richmond Nature House. So make sure that you uh, contact them and, and follow them. Uh, thank you so much, everyone. I hope you can go outside with your sketchbook and have a lot of adventures. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.